back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. The Star's Galaxy is a massive place, and for most of us normies, it's large enough of a space where our imagination can create infinite adventures and stories. But for some, the most ambitious amongst us, even the Star's Galaxy is not large enough for them to explore. In the novel Catalyst, captured smuggler Has Obit once asked Moth Wilhuf Tarkin, the Empire won't stop until it reaches the edge of the galaxy. Is that it? To which the Imperial answered in a completely straight-faced manner, why stop there? Classic Tarkin, always looking for more things to destroy and kill so he doesn't have to confront the trauma that is his past. Which I will now coin as a medical condition known as the Tarkin Syndrome, not to be confused with the Tarkin Doctrine, which actually does a great job at creating more people with the Tarkin Syndrome. Anyway, Tarkin wasn't the first or the last crazy individual who wanted to break out of this galaxy into the next. And now that Disney is in control of Star Wars and their ambition far eclipses even Tarkin's when it comes to the dominance of all of our fondest childhood memories and stories, who's to say they won't start looking outwards as well? After all, they've completely messed up this galaxy. Star Wars fans are so busy fighting each other that we haven't even looked up from the trenches and enjoyed the decline of our ancient rival, the Star Trek universe. I mean, at least we have the Mandalorians. All they have is, what, the Orville? It's a great show. I mean, go in. I gotta go in. Pick an entry. I will not allow you inside me. Doc, help me out here. So what if Disney tries to lead the Star Wars galaxy for some new creative real estate? Well, they're gonna run into a barrier. A giant barrier that actually surrounds the entire known galaxy. The current Disney canon doesn't have much of an explanation yet for why this barrier was created, and honestly, not even Legends is clear about this. But let's delve into the lore of this very interesting phenomenon that basically cuts off the citizens of the Star Wars Galaxy from everything else outside in the universe. So in the Star Wars Galaxy, you have two types of travel. Subspace, which is essentially what us humans are capable of, slower than speed of light travel. You have all sorts of different propulsion methods, ranging from chemical rockets to ion thrusters. This all takes place in real space. Then we have the more crazy hyperspace travel that allows for faster than light speeds. Using a hyperdrive, pilots push their ships into a hyperspace dimension where physics as we know it are completely thrown out the window and ships can reach incredible speeds. There are still rules in this magical realm, however, ships still had the same mass and energy they had in real space. And real objects like moons, stars, and black holes had mass shadows in the hyperspace realm as well. And if your ship hits one of these things in hyperspace, well, the results look something like the Holdo Maneuver or what happened to the Separatist heavy cruiser known as the Malevolence. And so one of the most important components of hyperspace travel is having a navigational computer or at least an astromech that can compute safe jumps. These machines have to calculate complex algorithms that take into account various star charts and also um, ship logs from other ships that have traveled through different areas and then find a very safe passage where they can basically take you through. And so all throughout the known galaxy, you have these clear hyperspace lanes which were considered safe and free of debris. But in some areas of the galaxy, you have large concentrations of anomalies like black holes and stars. These are areas like in the deep core of the Maw and the Unknown region. It was incredibly hard to jump through these areas. When a ship encountered these type of areas, a smart captain would revert back to real space and make these shorter line of sight hyperspace jumps, which of course took a lot longer time, or you could just travel at sublight speeds, which took an even longer time. In the Star Wars galaxy, there is actually a circumferential hyperspace barrier or bubble around the entire galaxy that is full of hyperspace anomalies, aka gravitational anomalies, that trigger a hyperdrive's failsafe and pulls the ship out of hyperspace in fear of collision. This means that if you are attempting to leave the Star Wars galaxy, you have to revert to real space. You can't just jump through hyperspace like you would from known systems. Now, in case you don't realize just how much slower non-hyperspace travel is, well, it takes about a week or so to cross the entire Star Wars galaxy using known hyperspace lanes. At sublight speeds, though, traveling from a world like Coruscant, which is in the core, to a neighboring planet like Alderaan could take several generations, and it would probably require a sleeper ship or cryo chambers. And so passing the galactic barrier is nowhere near as simple as it sounds, and it could take a ridiculously long time if you did it in real space. Pre-Republic specialist Dr. Insmont Bowen of the uh, Broen Institute of Archaeology theorized that this barrier was actually created artificially. It was almost as if some 
invisible force either moved these gravitational anomalies or created them and then arranged them at the edge of the galaxy. Bowen actually believed that an ancient powerful species was responsible for basically building this barrier. In Legends, the Republic dates back to 25,000 BBY. Prior to this, there aren't many reports left about the various empires and species that existed before the Old Republic. But we do know about the empire that existed prior to the Old Republic. They were known as the Rakans. The Rakans were a savage and primitive species that were uplifted out of their ignorance by the well-meaning Qua, an advanced species that traveled the galaxy looking for sentient races that it could uplift and add to the galactic community. The Qua used what were known as infinity gates that travel from planet to planet. They were basically stargates, and they would teach the Rakatans, who were naturally Force-sensitive, how to manipulate the Force and use their technology. Unfortunately, it was found soon after by the Qua that the Rakatans were naturally aligned to the dark side and also murdering cannibals. The Rakatans would take all they learned from the Qua and quickly expand it from their homeworld of Rakata and started an aggressive campaign of expansion against the rest of the galaxy. Now, the Qua themselves were aligned with a higher species known as the Celestials, who are kind of like your typical sci-fi progenitor race, something like what you would see in Halo or maybe Mass Effect. They were also known as the Architects because they had access to this crazy technology that has yet to be seen again in Star Wars history. They were also masters of the Force. It's rumored that the Force wielders that Anakin ran into during the Clone Wars were descendants of this powerful race. But even the Celestials and all their subject races were no match for the terrifying onslaught of the bloodthirsty Rakatans. And soon the Celestials found themselves running for their lives. Now, the Celestials were known as the Architects not only because they were a progenitor race, but because they actually had the power to move entire stars and planets. In Legends, signs of their work and metal line can be seen all over the galaxy. For instance, the Corellian system is extremely odd and unnatural. It has five inhabited planets with extremely weird orbits. Plus, it was later found that all five of these planets had massive repulsor engines buried beneath the surface. And then in between the twin planets of Talus and Trellis, there's actually a massive construct known as Center Point Station, which was effectively a huge tractor beam that could move entire worlds and even stars across the galaxy. There's actually just one of the many constructs left behind by the Celestials, and the Corellian system was just one of many systems that was altered by them. It's theorized that the Celestials, in the last ditch attempt to stop the Rakatans, quarantined them in the eastern quadrant of the galaxy by shifting stars and other large masses to build a hyperspace barrier. Over the years, the Western Barrier would continue to drift further and further out until by the time the Clone Wars started, it was mostly uh, found in the area between the Unknown Region and the Outer Rim. Dr. Enchilat Bowen theorized that only the Celestials have the power and ability to create such a massive barrier around the galaxy, and they probably did this to either keep the Rakatans confined or maybe to keep some extra galactic threat from piercing the galactic barrier and attacking the Star Wars galaxy. In Legends, only a handful of groups even attempted to surpass this region of space, let alone succeed in surpassing the barrier. And so very little is known about other galaxies in the vicinity of the Star Wars galaxy. Although in Episode 2, we do see that the Jedi map system at least knew of one distant dwarf galaxy nearly 150,000 light years away known as the Fire Fist Galaxy. Other than that though, the areas outside of the galactic barrier were as terrifying for Star Wars spacers as the oceans were for early Earth sailors. Around five years before the beginning of the Clone Wars, however, the Jedi Master Joros Chabaoth, an extremely capable and egotistical individual, led a Jedi expedition to the outer reaches of the galaxy. He believed that the Jedi could use the Force to either force their way through the barrier or at least guide their ships past all the gravitational anomalies. He would unfortunately never make it past the barrier. He'd be waylaid by the Chiss commander known as Thrawn. In Legends, the first known alien species to penetrate the galactic barrier from outside were the Yuzang Vong. Of course, they didn't really have a choice. Their mode of FTL travel relied on Davin vassals. These were organic machines that could manipulate gravity, but they didn't really work in the cold space in between uh, galaxies. They couldn't really lock on to any kind of star or signature, so the Yuzang Vong had to travel across this massive distance at sublight speeds. And so by the time they reached the Star Wars galaxy, most of their world ships were dying. They really needed to figure a way to basically pierce the barrier and enter the Star Wars galaxy. 
the Yuzhang Vong would eventually find an opening in the barrier in an area that would be known as Vector Prime, near the Hauska system, and from there, they flooded the galaxy. In canon, Emperor Palpatine in his last days also started looking at the edges of the galaxy either to perceive some kind of incoming threat, like the Yuzhang Vong or someone else, and I think uh, it's a really interesting aspect of Star Wars that isn't discussed enough. I think it's very possible that this galactic barrier might come up once again in the canon lore. I think the idea of exploring another galaxy outside of the Star Wars galaxy could be an extremely interesting pathway for Disney, especially if they want a fresh new canvas to work with. So there you have it guys, that's why traveling outside of the Star Wars galaxy is basically almost impossible unless you can find that hole in your Vector Prime. Let me know in the comments section below what you guys think. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy.